Oh, 500 CS, 13 CS per minute. It is not possible. Well, guys, it is. What's up, Game Weepers? It is the cheese back at it. And in this special video, you are going to learn how to get 500 CS at 39 minutes on the rift. And yes, you heard me correctly. And we're going to be watching how Reckless does it. How Reckless is able to get 13 CS per minute to hard carry a game because it's never just about kills. Yes, they are important, but there are other ways of acquiring gold and experience. And CSing efficiently is the cornerstone of becoming an elite player. So to hit that level, this video is going to be invaluable to you guys. Now, I want to know the most CS you've ever gotten in a game. And make sure to let me know in the comments, of course. And while you're down there, click on that link to the Game Leap website. The highest level courses, guides, videos you will find on the web that are made by challenger level players and coaches designed to help you become the best you can be. And yeah, links as always in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it, guys. And the first groundbreaking tip that Cheaters is going to give you, well, it's going to seem so simple and obvious, but players don't do this enough. Can you say yes when you're dead? Unless you're playing Sion, no. So guess what we have to do? That's right, we have to stay alive in order to get golden experience, and in the bot lane in particular, it's easier to die, because there are two sources of damage and CC on the opposite side of the lane, the enemy AD carry and enemy support of course, and I want to draw your attention to this situation right here. Reckless doesn't have the push, and this applies to all lanes by the way, so what does he do? Is he looking to fight the enemy Jin and enemy Rel? No, right, he's just chilling, because Jin and Rel just hit level 2, and this means he isn't going to hit the deck and he can secure this here as pushing into him. So in your games, when the enemy laners are hitting level 2 before you, back off, there's no reason to risk losing HP or your life for nothing. So this is one important time in the game, guys, where you have to place some value on that life of yours. And this right here is a cool little trick Reckless uses, and Thrash too, I guess, that helps him get all of these ranged minions because, as I'm sure you will know, CSing under tower is when CSing is at its hardest. There are influences at play that you can't control, like your minions damage and the tower damage, but when the enemy minions are not in range or influenced by these two factors, how easy is it? So when the enemy wave is threatening to crash into your tower, guys, eliminate these two influences by holding up the wave. Become a roadblock. Now, sometimes this can be risky if that wave is pretty big because you're going to cop a lot of creep aggro and lose a lot of health. But look at this game. Jin and Rel are not actually in the lane, meaning that Reckless is free to tank these minions and hold up the wave. So if we imagine Jin and Rel stayed in this lane, all of a sudden it's risky to make the same play because you're going to lose HP for it. So be aware of that in your games, but have this trick in your locker, holding up creeps to make it easier to secure them. Now this next tip guys I'm telling you is 100% guaranteed to increase your CSing numbers right away, so listen up. So as we watch Reckless CS here, what can you guys tell me about it? Is there anything you notice? And if you did in fact notice what I'm about to point out, the cheese said his respect. So Reckless is playing Zara, a ranged champion, right? And this applies to any champion, any role, any region, any ego. The further away you are from the CS, the harder it is to get that minion. And why is that? Well, your auto attack projectile has to travel that distance. And the longer it has to travel, the harder it is to time it perfectly. Whereas if you're standing up close and personal to the CS, like Reckless is, your auto attack doesn't need to travel that far at all, and it's quicker. There's less minion damage and time to take into account. And this is why on melee champions, it's typically a lot easier to CS because there is a lot less anticipation involved, especially in the early going. So when the enemy champions are super far away from you and pose no threat, do this in your games, guys. Get as close to that CS as you can. Become a melee champion, and your CS will improve drastically. And this is especially useful when you have a creep wave bigger than pro guys ad spend, because it's easier to react to that enemy minion's HP when it's going down real quick. If you're standing too far away sometimes, and I'm sure we've all been there, our auto attack doesn't even go off because the minion is already dead. So by standing literally on top of that CS, guys, it just makes it 10 times easier to grab that gold, so do it. Now another reason why Reckless is able to achieve 13 CS per minute and 500 CS in under 40 minutes is this one right here. Now as we watch him and his support take care of this Jace, Reckless is actually sitting on good gold right here. But when you kill someone on the enemy team, guys, they are not on the map. Now, why is this important? Well, think about this tower. Think about Krux. Think about the next wave. No one is here to protect them. So if Reckless was to just recall here, which is what many players would do, he actually misses out on so much more golden experience from these other resources. So the point here, guys, is to maximize our numbers advantage by taking free gold. Just because something is on the other side of the map doesn't mean you can't take it. If it's undefended, it's undefended. Of course, if Jin and Rel were bot lane in Reckless's game and relatively healthy, there's no way he can hit the tower like this and farm the next wave beyond the tower, but in this situation, when no enemy is remotely near you, get as much as you can from it. If not, you're leaving golden experience on the table and ultimately creep score. So even in this mini scenario, Reckless will get more CS out of it than the majority of players because his side of the map is freed up after Jace dies. So in your games guys, unless another enemy champion is nearby and can potentially punish you for it, extend that lead. Punish that enemy champion you just killed for dying, and you will be surprised at not just how much more you win, but also at how much your CS 
DPS improves. Now something else you guys have to start doing to improve that creep score number and to give yourself a chance of dropping 540 minutes, watch what Reckless does here. So after him and his team kill the same Jay spawn lane, Jin is shoving mid, as you can see on the minimap, which means that if someone doesn't pick up these minions he's pushing, so Reckless rotates to that mid lane, but right here, this is where so many players go wrong and they get drawn into suboptimal fights. When Reckless hits this vision plant, it shows Rel, and I'm willing to bet, not that much though, that some players would ignore that mid lane CS and go back to Thresh and the rest of their team because they are scared of a fight breaking out and not being there. It's that mindset of, oh no, my teammates are going to get caught, I need to save them. Nah, the reason this is suboptimal, guys, is because there is a cost to doing it. Reckless right now can get this CS, which doesn't seem like a lot, but this will be over 60 gold and every little matters. If he was to run to his team as well, he probably misses the next wave too. So even if that fight does go well and let's say they kill a couple of the enemy team, you actually missed as much gold mid lane because you didn't clear the minions before rotating. So you might have plus 150 gold from that fight because you got two assists, but you have minus 200 gold from missing two waves mid. And this is why Reckless clears these minions and shoves that mid wave out before he even considers going to help his team. Again, kills are the most impactful stat in the game, no question. But where there are kills, there are deaths. And sometimes, if not most of the time, not dying is the best way to win. So you safely acquire resources and get to the point like Reckless does in pretty much every game he's in, where you are far beyond belief and you end up carrying that way. Now, I personally love this mentality too, because when you do fight with your teammates, you're bringing other cooldowns, other egos, other tilt into play, and these things you are not in control of. So the situation is naturally more volatile and there's a bigger chance of it going south. So eliminate that cost before the fight in your games, guys. Clear the minions in whatever lane you are in and shove the next wave if it's not too dangerous. And then you have the cheese's permission to group up with your homies. Now, after telling your real homies to sub to this Red Hot channel as well, guys, the cheese will show you another clip which shows how much the top players in the world value CS rather than their teammates. Let's pause it right here and look at this screenshot. Thresh has a rel and gin on his head. What does Reckless do? He stays mid to shove the wave. God, I love selfish players. And that was me being serious because you take out the risk of the summoner rift equation. And after a few more seconds, look what happens. He actually picks up a free kill for it. How good is that? And then a minute or so later, after shoving another wave in the mid lane, and you guys can figure this out for me, what else is there on the map in terms of golden experience that Reckless can attain? So look at this bottom side of the map. Krugs are up, and because Reckless's team has some fat vision around the enemy's bot side jungle, he knows he can get these for free. So in your games, guys, sort the wave, and then think about other forms of bank and XP you can acquire, and your creep score will go from iron 4 levels to high elo levels hella fast. Now we looked at a similar situation earlier, guys, and I want to show you this as another example that proves my point. The CS is the most consistent and reliable golden experience outlet in the game. So when Reckless's team secures this infernal dragon, most players are going to dance off with the enemy team, thinking a fight surely has to break out. But what if it doesn't? Well, look at mid lane. Ryze is shoving this super minion wave, and if no one collects this wave on Reckless's team, that's big gold and XP. And later in a game when players are building towards their major items, it might be a death cap if you're a mage, for example, or an infinity edge if you're an ADC, or a force of nature if you're a tank, that income is more often than not paramount to your success. Like how many times have you guys been fighting over camps or minion waves with your teammates when the game opens up a bit? It becomes a CS fiesta, right? Well, if you get to those resources first, you are more in control. Now, at this point in the game, guys, Reckless has at least 300 CS at 25 minutes, and when you're on a carry champion with damage, it becomes easier and easier to CS later the game goes for more items, but I cannot stress to you guys enough that creep waves, yes, we need to place a lot of importance on them, but Reckless doesn't just think about minion waves, he's thinking about everything on the map. So when the enemy team does Baron here, Reckless knows the purple worm has gone at this point, so he shoves another wave mid, and like we did before, what else is on the map that will give him that coin and XP? Raptors, that's it. We are starting to evolve, I can feel it. And these counters for CS, by the way, in case you didn't already know, every jungle monster does. So when you see 500 CS at 40 minutes, guys, you have to realize that this doesn't just comprise minions. And without this perspective, there is no way, no chance you guys get to these crazy reckless CS levels, throwing Krugs as well. Now, not every game you are going to amass such numbers. That goes without saying, and most of the time being on the losing team is actually when it's most doable because super minions are running at you from all angles and you have to clear a lot of ways to stay in a game. But the tips that Cheese has given you in the reckless gameplay we've watched has shown that it is possible possible to achieve such ridiculous numbers on the rift. So take these tips into your games, guys. Remember as well to check out the Game Leap website on your way out and hit that like button to let us know you enjoyed the video. And until tomorrow's upload...